and three and two and one. Bless the Most High, our Creator, Lord thy God, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Moses was instructed to tell us to call him I am that I am. Translated back into Hebrew, we have Haya Haya. We will pick up Habakkuk 1 and 4, therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doeth never go forth. For the wicked doeth compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. In chapter 2, in verse 6, shall not all these, the heathen of all nations, and the people, shall not all these take up a parable, a pithy maxim, by words, against him, and a taunting proverb? A sententious maxim, dark sayings, against him, and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. These are the people that pledge themselves, and they shall, excuse me, shall they not rise up suddenly? that shall bite thee, and uh, awake, that shall vex thee, and shalt be for booties unto him. And that is what? Plunder. Plunder. A spoil, because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee, because men's blood and for the violence of the land. And this remind you of America. It's very clear it's America. Of the city. Is that Washington, huh? And of all that dwell therein the borders. And what do we call that? That's that North America, right? Thanks to M.W. Smith, we picked up with the Treaty of Paris, and we find that the king was actually King James. That was discussed, his, his, his. Which means once these dark sayings and everything is used to overthrow him, once they rise up, right? This is considered the... Yeah. The, the fool rises by 1848, the overthrow of all European nations. Of course, these were all the countries under the power of James, right? Uh, that is by led by George, who used the nations that were called forth to destroy James. And then, of course, what was used to destroy James was dark sayings and pithy maxims, which also would fall on the head of George, since George was the same skin color as James, and so that enters us into this moment here, where it says that these nations, right, the blood that was shed, it's these are the creditors, and they shall meet with no lawful impediment to recover the full, recover the full value and sterling money of all bona fide debts hereunto contracted. In the fifth article, it states, it is agreed that Congress shall earnestly recommend it to the legislators of the respective states to provide for the restitution of all the states of all rights, of all properties, which have been confiscated, belonging to the real British subjects, 
and also the estates, the rights, the properties of persons resident in the districts in the possession on His Majesty's arms and who have not borne arms against the United States. And that person of any that persons of any other description shall have free excuse me any other description shall have free liberty to go to any port excuse me parts part or parts of any of the thirteen United States and therein to remain twelve months unmolested in their endeavors to obtain the restitution of such estates, the rights and properties as they have been confiscated. So this is the key right here. Now, for these wars to take place and then our families to dwell back in these areas and historically they have been disenfranchised and this is what all the force and terrorism was used to drive them out of these areas a state of being deprived of a right or a privilege especially the right to vote now you ask how does white supremacy take hold when they vote and they do extracurricular activities to prevent you from voting. Now, and that takes us to the confiscation property of the American Indian and the British, and which led to what we call suffrage, which is the right to vote in political elections. Again, if they say this is for the U.S. citizen and uh, you're not a citizen then you can't vote your opinion doesn't count we want to analyze what is an act since these are not laws it says an act is a term for a formal body of law so it's a body of law. So you have to ask, what is a body of law? This is an ambiguous statement, meaning it could mean anything. It designates the law as a determinate corpus. All right, so corpus is a collection of written texts, especially the entire works of a particular author or a body of writing on a particular subject. Now, again, you're dealing with these pithy maxims, and this is bywords, right? So this takes you out of your legal standing, your identity. And this puts you into a false identity. And then, then you use the body of work of foreign. Now, they've listed you as foreigners which they which then takes the action of color of law okay and it seems a mere semblance of legal right an appearance right it appears on paper this is why in the public people will openly say it's racism but they don't understand to call it it's the depri deprivation of rights under the color of law Okay, so this then becomes, is color of law illegal? And it says, it's a statute and it makes it a crime for any person. So if they hit you with a statute, this is how you fight on their level with their own statute. It's a crime for any person acting under the, law, under the color of law as a statute, as an ordinance, as a regulation, or as a custom. And what does that mean? It means that someone is willing fully, willfully depriving you, or willfully 
deprive to or to cause to be deprived from any person right whose rights privileges or immunities that are secured by the protection of the Constitution and laws of the US now again these laws exist and we can't help that Ooh, they are in these offices and they are ignoring these laws so this means that we have to bring these forth to shine a light on them because all these acts of fraud have somebody's signature behind it so how is the law made a bill has to be voted on by both houses of congress which is the house of representatives and the senate okay and then it goes to the president and he or she can what choose to sign it or not that's how it becomes law now an act versus a law we already heard when a bill is passed in identical form by both the house and the senate it's sent to the president if he chooses to sign it it becomes law period statute is another word that is used interchangeably with law that's a lie and that's where the fraud is a statute is not a law it is a rule that in most muni municipalities they attach a fine to now whether you can argue that or not is the individual versus the criminal that's calling himself a judge why do you say that well it clearly stated right here what that the law is what the law is slack it doesn't say statutes are slacked it doesn't say ordinance are slacked and if the law is slacked and they're going by statutes then judgment do it never you're going you're getting fine that's not a judgment that's a fine now you bought you you slide out a library book and you damaged it now pay for it now what did you damage when you were speeding no law hmm? is being used there statutes so if you speed and you didn't damage anything how are they charging you something it's a product its product what do you mean well if they pull you over for speeding what does everybody else do they slow down right you're buying something a sense of security but it, you're really not it's a fraud The law is not being used. Of course, it's slack. Hmm? Sluggish, faint, feeble. The law is feeble. Hmm? So, we know how a law is created, but what is an act? Right? A statute is a law enacted by a legislator. Well, we already know that laws are enacted by the president, not legislator. You, you see what just happened? Statutes are also called acts. Now you see what's going on? They didn't make civil rights a law. That's just some side stuff that's agreed upon.
There is no law a $5 bill is a $5 bill. That is something mentally agree agreed upon because what you are taught. There is no law that a, huh? a 20 is a 20. That's something agreed upon. So, we need to understand what an act is. Now, you see they give you the definition of law, uh, law for an act. Now, you see that? Now, here it is right here. In Merriman-Webster, you get an act of law is... We got to freeze. No, oh, yeah, but no. All right is a change of a person's legal rights, their legal obligations, or their uh, legal liabilities, as in the acquisition, right? Now, you see how hard it is to find what the definition, the true definition of an act is? Act, definition, law, and then you gotta come down you got to read everything, right? Act, legal definition, a statutory plan. That's not a law. Statutory is a statute. A statute isn't a law. A statute is a, huh? a rule of thumb. Huh? You know what a statute is. Let me go right here. Huh? What does it say? Is, is, it, is it a byword? No, it's not a byword. This is a taunting proverb. It's a trick. Huh? A conundrum. How could the federal government that have a constitution to, to protect people's rights, how could they make plans to take people's rights? It's a centenious huh? maxim. It's a statutory plan. And it's passed by one side, but not the other. But then the president still signs it. That's not a law. Both sides have to sign it. Right? But then they, we have what? Now, they signed an act, a statutory plan. It's a code. A code is they they conduct themselves right. So it's not the full body of legislator. It's half the body of legislator in Congress. Uh, I mean, excuse me. The, the 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 Constitution already states both sides have to say it, which means they knew it was illegal in the first place. But the president sitting in the seat at the time said, "Hey, we'll risk it anyway, huh? Let's steal from them." So. They want to tell you the legislative body, that's both sides, Senate and the House of Representatives. But we already see it's when one side hmm? It's not a law, even if it's passed by both sides. So, think about this. So then it made me think, what, what is all these things that happen? Civil Rights Act of 1866. Well, why? You just had slavery end in 1865. 
declared all persons born in the United States to be citizens. Well, that act did what? It took your your real British subjects from you. They knew exactly what they were doing. We'll steal their property and we'll make it federal property. Huh? And we won't, and when as a citizen, without distinction of race or color, there goes your British citizenship. There goes your Indian titles connected to your British citizenship. You know what this actually does? The right to bear your family coat of arms. And hold guns to defend them. You're citizens. You don't you, you don't need that shit. You have federal protection now. You have state protection. Or previous condition of slavery without in or or involuntary servitude. Hmm? So and look, the president vetoed it. President vetoed it and it was overturned by Congress. So then it started made me think what else was done along the way? And each of these years, right? And then the next one comes out, same year, prohibits discrimination in housing because of race or color. Meaning it doesn't matter if you have a city of people that were Indians and British. A Caucasian person can move in no matter what you say. Hmm? Civil Rights Act of 1968. You see the same? Unless somebody here at Google is very confused about what they're trying to, right? It's HUD. It's the government anyway. So then I started looking, it was 1875. And there's so many, right? If all men are free or everybody's a citizen, why would you need a Civil Rights Act to, uh, of equality? All men obviously aren't free, and now it's equality of all men before the law. Well, that's and the pro, pro, it's pro, prohibited racial discrimination in public places and facilities such as restaurant and public transportation. Why would you need this if in what? This is the 1800s, 10 years before this, white slaves were free. They came from Algeria, Tunisia, North Africa. All along, because they were the barbarians that turned to piratry. Tripoli, Tripolania, Tripolitania. So this is undeniable. All you got to do is have one of these book covers. You don't even have to have a book, right? So as I started looking through this, I just it just became kind of ridiculous. So and then it made me say, well, there's got to be something that holds all these as a list instead of me trying to dig through and figure it all out. And so there we have, right, history.house.gov. And this is constitutional amendments. These are acts. These are you, you going to say and major civil rights acts of Congress referenced in Black Americans in Congress, right? So that really says, right? Rules brought up to what subjugate him? 
statutory plans created and initiated by huh, the legislative branch to and, and what disenfranchise the real British subjects. Hmm? And how do they do that? By forcing you to be citizens. The 13th Amendment, it did what? It abolished slavery and involuntary servitude. Except. So slavery ended and they said, no, fuck that. We can't end it. Let's, except as a punishment for a crime. So think about what was slavery about anyway. Slavery must have been about a punishment as a, of, a, of a crime. Then involuntary servitude is what? It's, it's employment. So if you choose to, you, 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 you work and you get something out of it, but if you break the law, right, you are forced to do it, right, for a period of time. Now, these other whole oh, lifetime slave and all that stuff, oh, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I only see it in movies and TV. This alone lets a person of a form of intelligence know that slavery was all about hmm, criminal acts anyway. A punishment for criminal acts. Next, that they want to state is the Civil Acts Right of 1866 declares all persons except Native Americans, right? Now they keep you in that position, in that status, so that again, you are not to hold your property because your property has been confiscated, born or naturalized in the United States to be citizens. So even naturalization, right? You're still a citizen. Guaranteed the rights of all citizens to make and enforce contracts. That's the only right you get, make and enforce contracts and to purchase, sell, or lease property. It says nothing about the, the what? The, the, the restitution of your confiscated belongings of what? Because your heirs, to something, all of you. And obviously not the white people because they're the ones that did this to you. Obviously not the people that came after all this because they're benefiting from it. The 14th Amendment, it declared that persons born or naturalized in the US were citizens and that any state that denied or abridged the voting rights of men and women over the age of 21 would be subject to proportional reductions in its representation in the House of Representatives. Now, again, look at the first. It's the same as the Civil Rights Act. So the Civil Rights Act made sense. So what they really did was uh, uh, everybody that was born in, right, or naturalized are citizens, and it takes away right your airship see this doesn't really matter about people coming foreigners coming and being naturalized this means the children born after 1866 right they're stuck in citizenship too which means they're doing what they're practicing the dis disenfranchisement Right? The state. State is status. The state of being deprived the right or privilege. Now, what again are they doing? See, the, the, they're taking from you all the states, the rights, and the property that was confiscated to you when you were as British subjects. <laughs> now, After the 14th Amendment, you get the first Reconstruction Act. Now, Reconstruction is the same as Revolution. 
This divided the former Confederate states. And what was the former? These, this was British territory. It divided that. To who? To the Fed. In the five military districts. See, this is why when I go into my family history and I look in Georgia, uh, when they were in Georgia in the 1800s, and they were divided, their roads uh, were, were created, and their roads had military uh, 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 names on them. Not like clustered or shit like that. It was a uh, uh, military district, a number, and then the streets were numbered. Which means the military took over their land. And as citizens, you don't have any power over the military. But as British subjects, oh, the, the U.S. Uh, military can't come over and start messing with you and stripping you of your land because that goes against the treaties. But again, to say your British subjects would say to know would say that you knew about the treaties to argue about the treaties in the first place. So now remember, at this point. These people can still say they're Indians, but it's meaningless because all their, their property went under what? British power, British authority. That's why the, the, when the Fed, the Fed pretends that they are the power of British, and then that's why they have these, huh? These five what? These five tribes that said they would sit down and bargain with us when they're not tribes at all. They're actually, what, Mexican people, and they share the same blood as uh, Mongolians. See, again, was this their fear that time would pass and all this data would come out to be able to link it all together? So they divided your land, okay? They they turn they put it into milita military districts, and these are the reasons for the cause of uh, 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 great migrations that start taking place. Uh, somebody leaves and writes back or, or or travels back and says we found a place that's better than this because these people aren't there. So this required. Okay, each administrated by a general charge with maintaining law and order. So again, the military is is what it's basically a form of martial law, right? There is no martial, and the military is acting in place of a a martial. It's required the former Confederate states to adopt new constitutions. Now, that's the states in the South, and that new constitution means what? Whatever you were going by before, you ain't that anyway. Now, again, if the people in the South had the constitutions and the constitution said they were real British subjects and the whole time they keep forcing them to be declared as U.S. citizens, this is the whole goal to get is the, it's the goal to get around the Treaty of Paris. See, Obama is the only president that comes out openly and says all treaties are still in effect. And then what? Trump reminds you, no, oh, those ain't Indians. And all treaties, like he said, are still in effect. I'm not saying these guys are good. I'm just saying these guys threw you a bone. All those rappers rapping Trump's name, he loved that shit. Now, second. Reconstruction, same thing as a revolution, right? Now, this is what, 1865 to 1867? This is the time of what? The Freeman Bureau closing down. That's what it was all about. Because what? They connected the family names. And then you do, because what? Freedmen. How are you freed? What, what happened to you? How are you an indentured servant? How are you a slave? So that was the goal of the Bureau. And remember, the Bureau was closed down because of white 
what so, uh, southern white pressure we know that's not really what it was it was the north here in the second reconstruction it provided for the election of delegates to particular to, excuse me to participate in constitutional conventions in each of the former confederate states now why would you have a constitutional convention hmm? These are your rights under the Constitution. What rights did they have before? This is the point. This required the governors of each military district to register all male citizens to vote. That's not you have the choice of vote. It's not. Provided they were at least 21 years of old, have taken an oath of loyalty to the United States. Now, you see what this is all about? Stand the fuck up and face this piece of fabric. I pledge my allegiance to this false god standing in the ocean, overseeing uh, the land where she has no children. And, and have not been disfranchised for participating in rebellion against the United States. You see what's going on? That's what's going on. All they got to do is what? Prove? Ooh, this says this says they ain't proven shit. This says the law is slacked. All they gotta do is make up. And this is how this is what they use to disenfranchise you. See, it's right there. See, nobody can argue this. They have it on their own motherfucking paperwork. We use this to disenfranchise. You already know disenfranchising someone is what? Against the law. You see, the whole time, you, 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 you got an act that say that they can do something illegal. Keep looking. This is the whole point. An act to do, to do something illegal. They confiscated the, the, fuck, the, the 13 colonies that became states and turned them into military. Broke them into five. They group 13 into five and call it military districts. That's how they took your rights away. Over and over again. And they using these acts until they say what? Ooh, this, this act is so good, let's make it a law. This is how they're doing it. And that's not enough. Here's the third act. Granted the governors of the military districts established in the former Confederate states. Hmm? Absolute authority. Excuse me, this is not the 13 colonies. It's just the, the, the lower states that were Confederate against the North. Hmm? And now they have governors in there for the North dic dictating shit, right? It's right here. And he granted them absolute authority over all civilian and military officials. So, again, that's disenfranchisement. They can take anything they want. They think they can. That's why it's an act. It's not a law. They know that's illegal. Granting the governors of each military district the power to determine the eligibility of votership. Which also means what? They can disenfranchise you. And they weren't happy with three acts. They said, let's do another one. Right? Specified that any election 
to select the delegates to the constitutional conventions for each of the former Confederate states, right? So it made an election for delegates for each of the, f what, five former Confederate states? As well as any, an election, excuse me, any election to adopt a new constitution in said state. So, each state is being forced to create their own constitution to try to get around the constitution. This is what the amendments are for. Slavery ended, they said, fuck that, we still need slaves. Hmm? And what they do with those slaves? They built the railroads. Who were those slaves? The real British subjects. The Indians and the British people. Right? Not until they built the railroad out through the West. So, <clears throat> then, here we get the 15th Amendment. Wait, 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 wait. You got to get a new constitution. And it must be decided by a majority of the votes cast, uh, Votes actually cast. Now, you see what just happened? <clears throat> they just told you they had fraudulent votes. So for how many years did they have all these? It's still 1867 to 1869. They just freed people in 1865. All this stuff is happening. 1867, 1869, 1865, 1867. Over and over again. As soon as they were freed, all hell broke loose if you've been working on somebody's property because you were a thief and you've been there what 15 years that's like that's like 15 years in prison right then you go out and you do what you gang up with other people the same mentality or people that you can what talk into doing so you this is when you start to get your cowboys running around stealing shit this is what you said uh 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 uh, uh the, the hate was it the hate for eight uh, uh uh the haberdashery owned by a black woman out in montana montana and a gang of white cowboys come and rob red rock the city and they hold up at the haberdashery until what the bounty hunters come for them that's what the whole movie's about. Ex-white slaves turned marauders, marauding into the western towns and robbing the banks of their wealth and then, what, going on the run until the bounty hunters catch up. And what is Kurt Russell? He's a different breed of white man that wasn't enslaved, that came to what? Chase the criminal. Now, you get a chance, watch Hateful Eight and pay attention. The 15th Amendment prohibited states from depriving a citizen of his right to vote because of race, color or previous condition of servitude now again they already have that over and over again unless somebody's trying to figure out what how do you deprive them so right this is 1870 so from 1865 to 1870 guess what people are getting deprived of their vote now it very well could be white people, but I highly doubt that since all these black people are being forced to be called citizens, make new constitutions, in a, so that means whatever colonial constitution, whatever constitution they made to first be a state and acknowledged as a state, remember, whatever constitution was there had to do with slavery 
or ownership of people, and they're trying to force them away from that, and to do what? Call themselves citizens, which deprives them of their lawful right to possess their forefathers' belongings. See, me or you think this is just about rights. But it said estates and other property. So imagine you had a farm. And the farm was passed down for generations. And on the farm, you grew food and you had many, many animals. Now that's all gone. All your stock and all your stalks. It's been dispersed into five new families. They've made money off of it for generations now. And your family has eaten dirt since 1865. Now, it says, the first Reconstruction Act. Okay, we've done that. I recognize that. All right, so we just did the 15 minutes. So we're at the first Enforcement Act. See how... <laughs> okay, so now prohibited. See, so you cannot discrimination in voter registration on basis of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. So again, that can very well affect white people. Establish penalties for interfering with persons' right to vote, and it gave federal courts the power to enforce the act to employ the use of federal marshals and the army to uphold it. Now, like I said, that could very well affect white people, but again, this is the confiscation, confiscation of your properties, your belongings, and of course, your rights. Now, the Second Enforcement Act allowed federal circuit judges to spread out to appoint supervisors to monitor federal elections. Now, because, again, there's so many people, everybody can't afford to come to Washington. So they spread out, they make these districts within each state. And again, you can't expect people to come everywhere in the state. So this is what the circuit is right now we all know what a circuit board is you have to connect everything on a circuit board to make it work and this is what they're saying they're trying to connect everything to make it work it authorized u.s marshals to employ deputies to maintain order at polling places so the military is still in control but now marshals are being created for elections and elections only now, again, drunkenness being handled by the military, theft being handled by the military, all this being handled by the military time. Okay, so the Third Enforcement Act, and you get the rise of the Ku Klux Klan, and this is in 1871 to 1873. Now, what's this do? This enforced the 14th Amendment. If you steal some shit, you're a slave, you go to prison. By guaranteeing all citizens of the United States the rights afforded by the Constitution and provided legal protection under the law. Now, what's that mean? That means power just went to the U.S. Marshal. Held that each state government was liable for failure to provide all citizens with equal protection under the law. Now, remember, this is called the Ku Klux Klan Act. This means the sheriff must protect or the military must protect whoever needs it based on what? It can't just be the Ku Klux Klan. It's the, the Ku Klux Klan had become so strong by that point. Now, held 
that the government, uh, excuse me, the state government liable for failure to protect the citizens empowered the president to suspend habeas corpus in areas deemed to be in rebellion against the government. Now you see what was going on at the time. Nobody wants to be a part of this. They want things how it was before. Now what's happening? Well, you have the, the Ku Klux Klan is in full blast by 1873. They have to make laws to stop them. Your rights are being taken away and you are your previous the person that was your property right is now equal to you now they have nothing but they're equal and then you start to get the insurrections which means what they're ganging up into a marauder status and they're going to rob other towns because what they're trying to take their finance and start a house or a small community or their own town. They're not doing it out of hard work. They're doing it out of destroying your towns. It says right here, I'm going to do something new. Behold, ye among the heathen, after you do these things and regard and wonder marvel marvelously, for I will work a work in your days. Now, this is the days of the heathen. The tale, the historical slave has become the head. I will do a work. I will work a work in your days when you are the head which will uh, not believe which ye will not believe though it be told to you and i'm gonna raise up the chaldeans a bitter and angry set of hmm? and what and they will come they will march through the breadth of the land what is that that's the Americas, the, the, the North American continent. From what you call Canada to, to California. To possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. I'm tell you right there. They are a terrible and dreadful peoples. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards and more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen, they shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from afar and they shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. Do you know what that means? Have you ever seen a little field mouse running around and then an eagle just swoop down, grab that thing, and it's gone? Let me show you from time to time, little 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 snake, little snake, little reptile running around, and here come a bird, just whoop, come and snatch it. He's telling you exactly what they shall come all for violence they ain't coming for beer they ain't coming for women they ain't coming to hang out hmm see it's all right here they're not coming to make friends They're coming, they're coming because of him, because of this. 
I've been on this road a little bit of time, and I started to imagine when I look back at a lot of the video titles, why do they all fit a category? You would think I was a mastermind planning this out years in the past to achieve this right now. I didn't do any of this except I just turned the camera on each, each time. In this society, I'm considered nothing. Yet nothing has been able to see through their veil. How could something like that be possible? Hmm? So, it held the states liable, leanable, alienable. It empowered the president to spend to suspend habeas corpus, right? Now, the Civil Rights Act of 1875, wow, 10 years after slavery ended and we're just kicking out all these lies, it barred discrimination in public accommodations and on public conveyances on land and water. Prohibited the exclusion of what? African Americans. Now, you see that word wasn't used back then, so this is all. So, with that, you already see what's going on. They make these laws, you can't do this and you can't do that, but the whole time it was about you being excluded. Anybody can read this and say, hmm. Now that I know what sides are there, I wonder who was being excluded. Now one has to ask, ask the obvious question, how did slaves, uh, one day, ten years later, they're in control of these things? Hmm? Why, or ten years later, would they have to make laws to not exclude the African American? Hmm. Are we sure they're talking about black people? Or are they talking about white people? And again, you can't sit there and say race, creed, or your previous... It doesn't say... So I want you to think about this. A lot of this has to do with white, in my opinion, an Indian. Now, it states... Everybody has to be a citizen. That's the attack on you, the discrimination and, and, and suffrage. Because now you're no longer what? The royal right to the land. Then they put the military on top of you. That's to attack you and to enforce what? Equal. Because each time it says you cannot discriminate them of their previous status. Or their color. Again, there's no TV, there's no radio at the time. Everybody knows they are the African American. We're using these bywords against them, and this is right at the point when they rise up. Now, how do they rise up? By force. Now, the 19th Amendment grants women the right to vote. The next thing that happens is the civil right. Now, you see it's nothing until 1920. These are the years of the insurrections. 1875 to almost 1925, which is 45 years. And remember, the last thing that they said was, you got to stop acting this way towards them because they were formerly slave, and we got to stop the Ku Klux Klan. So it's actually a 45-year war that takes place between here and there's no record of it. Who lost that war? 
Well, you're citizens, so you don't have the finance to fund the war. And they're thieves and they're robbing people along the way, which means they eventually accumulate the finance to win the war. Here you have 1957, right? Now, all the racism that they always try to tell you about. Hmm? Nothing about 1919. Nothing about the Great Migration. None of this. This is the point of uprooting. Burning down the towns, flooding the towns. Grouping together, going into the town at night with shotguns. No laws against anything like that. But we have a complete record of it happening. Now, all of a sudden, it's a Civil Rights Act of 1957. And this is a guarantee that things have been reversed. And now the laws uh, are not protecting you. A commission was ordered to document cases in which certain citizens were deprived their right to vote and a report on the effectiveness of existing federal laws with the respect to the 14th Amendment Equal Protection Clause. Forty five years of terror right here. No documentation of any laws to stop it. And in the middle of it, World War One and World War Two. So we're too busy with the world. And since everybody was so busy, there was the overthrow of power. And it's all here. They established the Civil Rights Division in the United States of Department of Justice authorized the U.S. Attorney General to seek court injunctions against deprivation and obstruction of voting rights by state officials. Now, most of you don't vote, so you don't see the importance of this, and this is why every time you turn something on, most of your politicians that are elected are, are usually caucus or Caucasian. Civil Rights Act of 1960 has expanded the enforcement powers of the Civil Rights Act of 1957 regarding voting rights and the introdu introduced criminal penalties for obstruction, right? So there were no penalties before. No penalties before. Implemented, uh, implementation of the federal court orders. So this required that voting and registration records for federal elections be preserved. All right. So that way, what, they could go back and see if something was rigged or not. Now, the 24th Amendment. Anybody see the 23rd up here? No, because it doesn't pertain to us. Okay, so it outlawed the poll tax as a requirement in federal elections. And it pro approved by the 87th Congress, right? And in 64, the Civil Rights Act prohibited discrimination in public accommodations, facilities, and schools. So we already had this. Now, you can see when it has to repeat itself, right? It seems like it's a flip of the coin. Outlaw discrimination in federal funded projects, housing, right? Prohibited employment discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. And this is the time of what? Big industry. Cars, tires. Hmm? 
to works and it created the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission to monitor employment discrimination. It provided additional capabilities to enforce voting rights. Now you have the Voting Rights Act of 1965. This suspended the use of literacy tests as a requirement to vote. So then, right? You had to be literate to vote. So you can see how, again, there is no record of black people burning down white cities. There's no record of black people burning down white schools. There are records of white people burning down black businesses, schools, cities, even flooding them. When you have your stuff destroyed by them, and then, of course, you have to go to the new, nearest city, which means, oh, that's their city. Then they discriminate. Okay, so you can see how this works out now, right? I'm not saying that your your people don't have it in the, uh, their heart to do this or that. We have historic recordings of their actions. Again, even when we look at Canada, this is not melanated people going into to, to schools with melanated Indians and destroying them all. Okay, we already know it's an act of hatred and that it was a Caucasian act of hatred to do this to these children at schools. If they're going to do this to children, of course, what are they going to do this to the adults? Again, we can see they practiced extermination programs in the past to what acquire the land. So again, these rules about voting this and voting that is one thing. Uh, we don't see any acts to stop real terrorism. Remember, to vote, you have to be a citizen. This is the game that they keep playing with you. All these acts is to keep you from being acknowledged by the treaties that are in effect. All these that come voting rights, voting rights, mm, hate grows out of proportion and more civil rights. And then we get to what? Fair housing amendments. These are allegedly to protect you, but we already know redlining exists even today. So they put these things in place. They call it an act, but it can't be enforced because it's not a law. Meaning they do it to you in the public is one thing, but when you go to court to say, oh, the Fair Housing Act, I want to, be I want to benefit from it because I was discriminated against, and you only can win on the terms of proving discrimination. Then that just has to deal with discrimination. It doesn't deal with this act. Now the act might put an office closer to you, but all it does is give you false hope. The real argument is against your former position this w that was established through war. I hope you understand this. Your family's contributions to build this country have been ignored so that Families that are in secret groups can maintain your trust and your 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 estate trust. Maintain your estate trust and retain the interest that is made off of your ancestors' actions. I truly hope that you take the time to learn more about your status, about how to correct this, and start searching the ways of restitution.
There is no reparations for you if you look like me because you were never enslaved. You were deprived. You were disenfranchised. May the Most High be blessed by you coming to a new understanding that there is only one way out of this. Return to the Most High to restore your title.